Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 3.4. We're given a polynomial. And in number one, we're given a zero. We're given that x equals 1 minus 2i is a zero. We're asked to find the remaining zeros of p. And once we have the zeros, we're asked to factor the polynomial over the complex numbers and then over the real numbers. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, if x equals 1 minus 2y is a 0, then that means that x minus it has to be a factor. That means when I synthetically divide 1 minus 2y into this polynomial, I should get a remainder of 0. So we write down the coefficients of the polynomial. We're not missing any powers of x, so we don't need any placeholders. We bring down the 2, and we perform synthetic division as usual. We take this times 2, and we get 2 minus 4i. And now I add, I get negative 2 minus 4i. And now I multiply these two together. So when we multiply complex numbers together, the thing we want to keep in mind is that i squared is negative 1. So when I multiply 1 minus 2i times negative 2 minus 4i, I can go ahead and multiply those like any binomials. Negative 2 minus 4i plus 4i plus 8i squared. So I get negative 2 plus, these cancel out, 8i squared, remember, is 8 times negative 1, so that gives me a negative 10. And now I add and get negative 3. I multiply this by negative 3. I get negative 3 plus 6i. I add these together. I get 3 plus 6i. And now I multiply these out. 1 minus 2i times 3 plus 6i. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 6i is 6i. Negative 2y plus 3 is negative 6i. Negative 2y times positive 6i. Negative 12i squared. The i's cancel out. I get 3 minus 12. i squared is negative 1. So this really gives me a positive 15. And miracle of miracles, I get a remainder of 0. Now remember, our ultimate goal in doing the synthetic division is to get down to a quadratic or a quadratic in disguise. In other words, we just want three non-zero terms. I started with a fourth degree polynomial. I've done one synthetic division. I've knocked it down to a third degree polynomial. I've got four non-zero coefficients, and they're truthfully frightening because they're non-real. Two of these coefficients are non-real. So I go back to the complex conjugate theorem. Our polynomial can, has real number coefficients. And in order for the polynomial to have real number coefficients, if 1 minus 2i is a 0, then its conjugate, 1 plus 2i, must also be a 0. Non-real zeros of real polynomials come in conjugate pairs. So that means I should be able to divide 1 plus 2i into my quotient polynomial and get a remainder of 0. So let's see if that works. I bring down the 2, I multiply, I get 2 plus 4i. Oh, and look at that. They completely cancel out and I get a 0. 0 times 1 plus 2i is 0, and I add. Multiply by 3, negative 3 minus 6i. Miracle of miracles, I get another 0. So what do I have left over? This represents the polynomial 2x squared minus 3. So I've got my polynomial p of x, and I've broken it down to x minus 1 minus 2i times x minus 1 plus 2i times 2x squared minus 3. So if I'm looking for the zeros, I'm setting this equal to 0. I'll get the 1 minus 2i, I'll get the 1 plus 2i, then I set this equal to 0. Okay, so how do you solve 2x squared minus 3 equals 0? Well, we can add 3 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, 
and extract square roots. Now if you don't like having the square root of a fraction, we can always rationalize the denominator by multiplying by 1 on the inside of the radical in the guise of 2 over 2. So in the numerator, I'm going to have the square root of 6. And then the denominator, I'd have the square root of 4, which is 2. So the uh, zeros of p are x equals 1 minus 2i. That was given to us. 1 plus 2i. We got that from the complex conjugates theorem. Uh, the square root of 6 divided by 2. and negative square root 6 divided by 2. Now, it doesn't ask for this, but we'll need it for the part 2. What are the multiplicities of each of these guys? Well, from what we did in class, we know that if I look at the degree of the polynomial, in this case it's 4, that has to be the sum total of the number of zeros counting multiplicities. So we have four distinct zeros. They're all different. That means they can all have multiplicity one. Now, since we've got the zeros, we can go ahead and do number two. Number two asks us to factor the po uh, polynomial p of x over the complex numbers. That means we need to completely break it down over the complex numbers. According to the complex factorization theorem, we can get this by taking the leading coefficient times x minus each zero to the corresponding multiplicity. So in this case, what do we have? p of x equals the leading coefficient, which is 2, times x minus the first zero, x minus the second zero, x minus the third zero, x minus the fourth zero. I can clean this up a little bit. It's two times. Distribute the negative. x minus 1 plus 2i, x minus 1 minus 2i, x minus square root 6 over 2, x plus square root 6 over 2. So this would be p of x factored over the complex numbers. Number three, we're asked to factor p of x over the real numbers, which means we have to break it down as far as we can using only real numbers, so not using any of the imaginaries. So once again, we use the complex conjugates theorem. Since we always get the non-real zeros in conjugate pairs, when I multiply their corresponding factors together, the i's are going to go away, and I'll be left with one of those irreducible quadratics. So in order to get number 3, we need to multiply these two things together to get rid of the i's. Even though these don't look nice and friendly, they are in fact real numbers. Okay, so let's look at multiplying these out. We use the good old-fashioned distributive property. We're going to take x times each of these guys. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 minus x. x times negative 2i minus 2ix. Now we take 1 times each of these guys, or rather minus 1. So minus 1 times x minus x. Minus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 times minus 2i plus 2i. And finally we take 2i times each of these things. I get plus 2ix minus 2i minus 4i squared. Now remember i squared is negative 1. So what do I get out of this? Well I've got x squared there I've got a minus x, minus 2ix, minus x, plus 2ix. So the 2ix's are gone, and I'm left with minus 2x. I've got 1 
plus 4 because this is minus 4 times negative 1 then. So that's going to give me a 5. And then the 2y's cancel out. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 5. So for number 3, my final answer would be p of x equals 2 times this quadratic takes the place of these two linear factors. x squared minus 2x plus 5 times x minus radical 6 over 2 times x plus radical 6 over 2. So this would be as far as you could break down p of x using real numbers. So that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 3.4.